Hello everybody, this is Gary. I thought I'd do a quick video here. I'm not all that good at making videos, but I wanted to show you guys something. So lately people have been doing what's called intentional camera movement. And it's been done for a while. I think I did this the very first time, I don't know, about maybe 10 years ago, 8 years ago, I don't know doesn't matter it's been around for a while it's a lot of fun to do sometimes so what I'm gonna do is uh, show you how to do this if for some reason you forget to do it when you're out in the field so totally Photoshop but this is kind of fun and I just want to show this to you guys so anyhow I'm just gonna start with a, uh, a file here I've done some uh, uh, basic adjustments to it in Lightroom and I'm going to end up putting it into Photoshop here in a second. So you're going to need Photoshop for this, but hang with me here. This is kind of fun. All right. What I've done is I've taken a photograph of uh, the trees over in Boardman and uh, what I did is I straightened it out. So what I could do is I could hit this reset and we'll reset this and we'll start over again. Go through my basic uh, maneuvers here. When I first start up, first thing I do is I, uh, Hit chromatic aberration, remove chromatic aberration, and then I go with uh, enable profile corrections. Some lenses it works, some lenses it doesn't, and in this particular case it works pretty good, and I just straighten it out. So I did that with my uh, crop overlay tool, then I hit done. And that's about all I'm going to do here in uh, Lightroom, and I'm going to come up here and I'm either going to go in here and hit edit in, in uh, Adobe Photoshop, can't talk, or I'm going to do something like this. Sorry, I'll move this around. And it's because uh, this re video recording deal is up here. So either way, I'll either right click and go to edit in and send it to Photoshop, or I'll go to photo edit in, edit to Photoshop. It'll open up Photoshop in another window. It'll open this up in there. And the first thing I'm going to do here, and I got a reason for this, but I'm going to double or right click and I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm just going to go background copy. That's fine for what we're going to do now. All right, this is really easy. So if you're expecting something really f difficult, it ain't going to happen. So we're going to go up here to filter blur and we're going to hit motion blur whoa holy look what we got there and now we have uh, a little control box that pops up and it gives you a little controlling gamer here that allows you to control the angle of the motion all right so it starts at zero but if you change it to 90 or 180 Oh, excuse me, 270, right? Yeah, either 90 or 270, it'll give you the same thing. Okay. Wow. All of a sudden, we have a uh, motion blur. Holy cow. We can change this so we can vary it to just a little bit, to a whole ton of it. It just turns it into just straight lines. What I like to do is just kind of keep it in here somewhere. And I'll guarantee you, if you were to put this up and compare it to uh, a nicely done motion blur in the field. And I hope everybody understands what I mean by intentional camera movement. Um, intentional, cam intentional camera movement means that you hold the camera up and you move it while the shutter is open. That means you're going to have to have a shutter speed of a minute, or excuse me, a second or two or more, depending on how quick you want to pan this. And you pan it usually in the same direction that the lines that your trees or whatever it is that you're going to be doing is. So if, uh, of course, the trees go up and down, you're going to want to pan either up or down while the shutter is open. And uh, a lot of times when you're out there, you're doing this, you just kind of have fun. You do a whole bunch of them and take the best one and see how it looks and go from there. So, so anyway, like I said, take this and move this around to see where you like it. And uh, I don't know. It's all subjective. I'm going to leave mine like that. How's that sound? I'm going to hit OK. 
And there you go. My top layer has been blurred. Okay. Now I left that bottom layer there in case you wanted to vary the opacity or something like that. And then give it another effect. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Take this a little bit like that. Okay. All right. So you can kind of see what I've done. I've kind of let the bottom layer come through, which is non-blurred. And it gives a little bit of a... A little bit of a semblance of the uh, still forest with the movement of the blurred layer. So, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to layer. I'm going to flatten this. And I'll just save it. All right. And it will open back up here in Lightroom. There it is. Before. Oops, where did it go? Oh, I got it out of my uh, quick collection. Son of a gun. All right, let me see if I can go find it in the folder. So this happens to all of us. So it was October 24th. Now, there it is. You can see that I took a bunch of photos that day. So what I did is I put it back in a quick collection. I'm going to go up here to Quick Collection, and these two are in here. All right, guys and gals. Let's take a look at what we got. Alrighty. Before, after. So now that you're back in Lightroom again, you can uh, crop it if you want to. Maybe um, increase some saturation or something. Maybe I don't know. Sometimes if you increase the saturation, the blue comes out in the uh, trees and it's actually uh, works m more. The work, or excuse me, the blue comes out of the trees more on a blue day or a blue sky day. So if I wanted to, I can boost the saturation and take the yellows back down. Or, whoops, I mean luminance, or excuse me, hue. If I take saturation back down, whoop, raise the blue back up again if I want to. But either way. Either way, we're just playing with it now. Got it. There we go. So there it is. Hope everybody enjoyed the uh, tutorial. It was a quick one. And I uh, hope everybody goes out and gives it a try. If you don't go out in the field, give it a try in Photoshop. Anyway, thanks everybody. I appreciate you following the uh, work that I do. And I appreciate everybody's support. Take care.